Recently, Anthropic released three new AI models, Cloud3 Opus being the most advanced. And people started switching from using ChatGPT to using Cloud, because Cloud is as good as, sometimes it's even better in some tasks than ChatGPT. Today, I really want to talk about how can we use Cloud3 Opus, the most advanced model in healthcare, to improve communication and other things, like even brainstorming and coming up with differential diagnosis. So without further ado, let's jump in. One of the things I'm very optimistic about when it comes to large language model users in healthcare, it's ability to digest and understand the medical notes that we write in the hospital. Usually in the hospital, we copy paste notes a lot. And that means even if there is a mistake in one of the medical notes, we might carry forward this mistake. However, a large language model can help us improve the communication and improve the writing of our notes. I will give you an example here. For example, this is a, a case that you might see in one of the medical notes in the hospital. Please note that this is not a real case. I came up with this patient, I put things together, and even medically, this is not accurate. The treatment plans and the dates and the approach, it's not accurate. But it does reflect a medical note, okay? And this patient have a lung cancer, heart failure, and COPD. I want you to see if Claude AI can help me to rewrite this note in a better way so I can incorporate it in my own medical note. I started telling Claude AI, so this is a part of a medical note and I'm a physician. This is very important when you deal with large language models. You want to set the stage and tell them what you are working on. Uh, large language models, they have to understand the context to better help you. And I, I started saying that I want you to help me to improve the structure of this note. Can you organize it and write the information related to each diagnosis under a separate paragraph and mention the dates at the beginning of each sentence in a set of the middle of the sentence? Can you organize the information in a chronological order? And this is the way I like to write my medical notes. I write to write medical notes in a way that um, it's in a bullet points and always in a chronological order and the dates are in the beginning of each sentence. And after that, I pasted the note here. Note. If you're going to do this, please talk to your hospital IT uh, and see if this is uh, allowed. And the other thing, uh, make, sure, make sure you don't mention any patient-related information like name, date of birth, MRN, or any other sensitive data. So here in the notes, I also surrounded it, or in the text, I surrounded it by XML tags. And this is in Anthropic website. They say for better results and when you communicate with their large language model, separate the prompt and the text that the large language model needs to work on with an XML tag so Cloud AI knows which text I want it to work on, okay? If we scroll down and we look on the, the type of note it generated, it did a really good job. So here it wrote the cancer and the cancer-related information, and here it wrote the heart failure and the heart failure data and the COP and the COP-related information. One thing you can notice that there is some inconsistency. For example, here it wrote June 2020, and here it wrote August 21, 2020. Maybe this is related to the way that I wrote my note. Uh, and the other thing here, that it mentioned the cancer staging and the cancer treatment, uh, but then it mentions at the end, after talking about 2022, and then it mentioned that in 2021, uh, the patient completed the prophylactic whole brain radiation. So there is a, some discrepancy, and this was not in chronological order, but I assume that Claude AI wrote the uh, staging and treatment-related or chemotherapy-related information first, and then it wrote the uh, whole brain radiation. Of course, this saved me time. It's a it's minor error, and I can, can uh, correct that, but it's much more easier to put this information into Claude AI so it can help me to better write a better note, right? And then here, let's say I want to make this paragraph shorter, and I want to write or incorporate this data into my assessment and plan. Usually in the assessment and plan, we pull the most important information related to the diagnosis. And I told Cloud AI, can you summarize the cancer history in one paragraph, write the most important details, and write it in a bullet point. And so, it did a good job. Of course, it still needs a physician insight. For example, I might omit some details, like uh, first voice changes in 2020, I might omit that, or imaging studies, I might omit that. Different physicians have different way of writing their notes. So still a physician supervision is important here. One other thing we do in healthcare a lot is writing email and communication letters and faxes with other healthcare workers like physicians. 
If you follow up on the same patient that I provided an example on uh, earlier, and let's say I want to communicate with their pulmonologist, which is the lung doctor, and I want to make sure that this patient follow with their lung doctor for their COPD. So I started my prompt like the following. Can you draft an email to this patient pulmonologist? Their name is Dr. John Doe and give them a summary and an update about this patient's cancer treatment and ask them to follow up on this patient's COPD. My name is Dr. Jack Doe from Delta Healthcare Innovation Department. So it created a, a nice email and with appropriate subject line and then it drafted the email here. One of my important points here is the words used in this email are very human-like and uh, they are not technical, they are not hard to understand. This is in contrast to ChatGPT. I noticed that ChatGPT use uh, sometimes hard words to understand or words we don't use on day-to-day -day basis uh, in our daily English. But here, it feels like it's written like a human. But one of the things that I really didn't like is it wrote the cancer treatment in bullet points. Let's say I want to change this, okay? So I will tell Cloud AI, can you summarize the cancer treatment history in a paragraph and not in bullet points to ensure the consistency through the email? There is a table here, sorry about that. Okay, so it generated a, an email uh, with a proper subject line and also with a proper ending. And the main goal is regarding this POPD, the patient is a chronic smoker with a 30 pack year smoking history. His last pulmonary function test performed a year ago showed an obstructive pattern. I would greatly appreciate it if you could follow up on his COPD management and provide necessary updates. Another thing I want to mention here is like, notice how it understood the context. And when usually physicians talk to each other, we just try PFT. We don't try pulmonary function test. But if I put this into ChatGPT, it will write his last pulmonary function test and it will with open parenthesis and we write PFT and then it will close parenthesis. Again, this is less uh, similar to what humans do or normal doctors do. Normal doctors, when they communicate with each other, uh, they just write acronyms, although it's not the best way of communicating, but this is how things are. And Cloud AI here um, really understood the context and generated the proper email. I can also, if I didn't like it, I can make this shorter, uh, but I have a good structure, I can make this shorter, and I have a ready email to send and communicate with other healthcare provider. And I'm very excited about when it comes to AI in healthcare, its ability to improve our communication with our patients. Sometimes I listen to myself when I talk to my patients, and sometimes I observe my colleagues when they are talking to patients. Unfortunately, even the most experienced physicians still use some medical jargon here and there when communicating with patients. And this medical news can be overwhelming. Lots of reports and blood work results or imaging results can be very long, and it's hard for the non-medical person to grasp and comprehend. But if we put in this medical results into Cloud AI and ask it to explain it in lay terms, that would make it much more easier to our patients to understand simple things. And even more, sometimes you might tell the patient that they have emphysema, like in this case, but we know what emphysema is, but the patient don't because we use emphysema so much in medicine that we are not, we're used to it. It's, it's a lung disease. But sometimes patients, especially those who don't have high education level, might not know that. Here, I put a result of a chest CT scan and I ask Cloud AI to explain this to my patient in simple terms. Please note that this is a made up CT scan. It's not real. It's very short. It does not compare to the CT scan results that is generated in these days. But still, Cloud AI did a great job. I asked Cloud AI to explain this to my patient in simple terms. And it break it down and, uh, and explain term by term. For example, here in the results, we say that there are no um, associated pericardial effusion or enlarged thoracic lymph nodes. And it's nicely explained that there is no fluid buildup around the heart. And the other thing here, the result says that there is a centrilobular or paraseptal pulmonary emphysema. And here it explains it. It says to the patient that the scan did show some signs of emphysema in your lungs. And then it continues to say, which is a condition that causes the air sacs in your lungs to become damaged, making it harder to breathe. And this is really nice, simple explanation for emphysema to our patients. And similar to the context of the CT scan, 
uh, as the CT scan summarizes the results, the Cloud AI does that as well. And this is really great tool. And I see this being used more often for us as healthcare provider to improve communication with our patients. And instead of printing a CT scan report, we can translate this to a simple English and give them the simple English report, which makes it much more easier for them to understand. The last thing I want to talk about is how AI tools can help us to become more comprehensive uh, and uh, more holistic as physicians. Uh, usually working in healthcare is very busy and sometimes all of us are human beings and we make mistakes and we might forget some things. So let's assume I'm, I'm an internal medicine physician. I'm admitting a patient who is 65 year old who's coming with COPD exacerbation. And I wrote this part in my assessment and plan in my consult note. I'm seeing the patient in the emergency department. I'm just admitting them. And I ask Claudia, I, hey, like this is my assessment and plan. And uh, for this patient, how do you think I can make this more comprehensive? Okay, so here Claudia I gave me a long text because it didn't understand that I already wrote my full consult note. I just need help in the assessment plan, but still okay. That even helps me to rethink about my note. So here it told me to include diagnostic test results. There is nothing new in this. It told me to include vital signs. There is nothing new in this. Usually when we create a consult note in the hospital settings, those things are already auto-populated or we include them in our consult note because it's part of the billing. So lots of physicians make sure to include those things because if you don't include those things, you will not get paid. But also, interesting thing, that it asked me or it told me to include patients based on COPD status, any previous COPD exacerbation and hospitalization. And this is important. If a patient had three hospitalizations in the last six months, it is very different from a patient who had one hospitalization over the last three years. Current COPD medication and how the patient adherence. Sometimes we just admit patients without asking about their adherence. Unfortunately, I've seen this happening. Smoking history and current smoking status. We usually ask for this but also comorbidities like heart failure and anxiety, and those are common comorbidities in patients with COPD. And then it asked me to be more comprehensive when it comes to my treatment plan, to include the dose of the antibiotic, the route, the duration, uh, based on what pathogen I'm suspecting, what type of bronchodilator. See, I did not include bronchodilator. It asked me that maybe I need to put my patient on DVT profile access, um, what should I tell the other healthcare providers when they see them in the hospital, when they see the patient in the hospital, what should they do, what, what should they monitor for? And then also, it told me to uh, include other additional follow-up plan. Uh, how long I anticipate the patient is going to be in the hospital, when the hospital should be discharged. And this is important if you are working in an academic setting. If you are admitting a patient and the person who is taking the handover from you is a first-year resident or a medical student, so... This is important for them as a learning point. What are the criteria they should look for to assess when this patient can be discharged? Should they have a follow-up plan with their pulmonologist and their primary care? Um, did you do any smoking cessation? Um, patient education or COPD management? Uh, unfortunately, I don't see this happening a lot in the hospital. Usually this happens more in the outpatient setting. But this is a still very comprehensive plan I can include in my note. Maybe I should ask the patient when was their last COPD exacerbation or may, maybe I should go to my notes. Um, and this is a very simple example uh, because like in hospital, you usually get much more complex patients. Uh, but again, this is my general example. I made up this, uh, but still it's very good to help me to create a comprehensive plan. Now I ask, maybe I'm missing something else. What should I include in my differential diagnosis? What tests I should include? What other differential diagnosis I should think of? And it also gave me a comprehensive uh, differential diagnosis. It told me maybe you should consider a heart failure and maybe you can do an EKG, echocardiogram, you can throw a BMP and this is something we do in the hospital. Maybe I should consider pulmonary embolism and we know patients with COPD have a higher likelihood of developing pulmonary embolism or they have a higher prevalence also of developing PE. So maybe I should include this in my differential diagnosis and we see lots of patients with COPD exacerbation when they come to the hospital and they know, don't have any previous history of exacerbations. They might get a CTPE or a pulmonary embolism CT scan to look for any pulmonary emboli because this can also explain the acute shortness of breath and it's very important differential diagnosis not to miss. Maybe I should include coronary artery disease in my differential diagnosis. Maybe this patient has an asthma. Interstitial lung disease is less likely because usually those patients are less likely to present as acute shortness of breath and anemia uh, is less likely given that 
When I see this patient at this point, I'm writing my impression plan. I already have the CBC ordered by the emergency physician. And also consider other things. Sometimes patients with diabetic ketoacidosis present with shortness of breath. So this is very comprehensive list of differential diagnosis, as you can see. But still, we need the physician to supervise this output and also decide if we should include this in our assessment and plan and if those tests should be ordered for this patient in a specific context, in the specific given situation, right? But that being said, uh, still very comprehensive. And I said, okay, so maybe you can create an assessment and plan for me to put it in my note. So here, unfortunately, I was not really impressed because maybe this patient presenting with COPD exacerbation, I, I assumed it will add like one line that I should test for or I will test for other differential diagnosis like heart failure or P. I'm going to do a BMP or a CTP. But here, like it wrote an uh, impression and plan for each and every differential diagnosis. It's still not bad. It's still not bad. Don't get me wrong. The AI tool does not understand the context and what's going on in the hospital. And that's where our role as physician comes. But as you can see, this AI tool helped me to better come up with a faster comprehensive plan that helped me treat my patient. I might end up coming with the same plan if I go, I read up to date or other uh, uh, point of care tools. But this is much faster when comparing to going to up-to-date and looking at differential diagnosis. And remember, this is very simple differential diagnosis. I'm happy to hear your comments below if you have any other more complex differential diagnosis that uh, Cloud AI or other AI tools help you to come up and find a plan or the appropriate testing. This was Rupen from Delta Health Tech Innovators, and I hope you enjoyed listening to this one.